How many times per minute do you breathe? What kind of question is that? Did you ever think about that? Like, how many breaths do I take per minute? And how do you breathe? Through your nose or your mouth? That's so interesting. And it's like the main thing you learn in the absolutely stunning, awesome, wonderful, you have to read it book of James Nestor, Breath. It's really mind-blowing what you learn in this book, but it's a long one. And I want to tell you two things you should take away from this because it's absolutely super, super important. Point one, breathe through your nose always and everywhere. And I know I'm not the sporty, I'm not the sporty girl. And we were hiking in summer when I was starting to listen to this book, Steep, Steep Hill, like the pictures on the mountaintop. I don't know if you saw that. Um, the photo shooting I had and uh, I was like <sighs> through your nose through your nose but this is like for me it was an extreme situation but if you are a sporty person you have to consider to just breathe into your nose all the time and maybe you do that and say yeah come on that's not new it's just it was for me so so interesting to hear what happens inside of our head, like really, it, it changes. If you stop breathing through your nose and only your, use your mouth, and it's also a medical thing like, oh, you can't breathe through your nose, so use your mouth. You have two things. And, and all the breathing experts, and also, that's so interesting, the ancient um, tribes, they say, no way, you have to breathe through your nose. And... As I said, if you stop breathing through your nose, everything changes. It gets the, the everything gets narrow and it just it it morphs into like, oh yeah, so you don't use it, so I'm I'm building this back to I don't know, like it's 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 getting worse and worse and worse, but you can invert it and say, Okay, I breathe through you, through my nose all the time and then everything gets better. James Nestor had severe breathing problems and issues and that was his number one research which he backed up with like tribal visits where he noticed that um, they they push the lips of, of even babies gently together so that the baby when it's sleeping doesn't start to build a habit of breathing through its mouth so it's like super, super important. And he had medical researches and also like ancient wisdom researches that this is just a fact. We in nowadays times eating soft food and breathing through our mouth, mouth is really the baddest thing we can do and vice versa. The best thing you can do for yourself is breathe through your nose. And I'm really um, aware of that now and I'm aware when I don't breathe through my nose and I switch now. It's, it's kind of a training again and you can change that. If you catch yourself like, oh, mouth breathing, switch to nose breathing. It, the whole book talks you into that fact. You can just hear it from me without facts, but please buy this book, listen to it, read it. It's absolutely great. And um, there are so many systems here in, in our nose. Even, even um, there is a, a poison gas we are producing in here to kill viruses and bacteria. I mean, how genius is our body to, to have a defense mechanism in our nose? It's not only that we... The, the air gets warmer and filtered within the nose. It's so much more. Everything is in the book. But you just have to consider that you start or just continue to breathe through your nose all the time. The second message I just want to give you in the end, he says, it's so simple, but everything combined, he learned. He went to the... 
the graves, the mass graves of Paris, like underneath the city, there are thousands, millions of, of um, bones of, of um, sculpts. I don't know the word in English. But he he really did his studies down there with the with the, the bones of these people, which changed within the the centuries where we stopped hunting and and eating like raw food from nature to cooked food, soft food, soups, smoothies. Even it's it we need our jaw here to to use the whole system in the right way. That's another thing. Eat, eat food. You have to chew and like chew with uh, with patience. That would be another improvement. But breathing through your nose is the most important. And he did all this research, and in the end, he says, "Okay, now my message: breathe in for 5.5 seconds, breathe out for 5.5 seconds. That's all. And that's and it's." I, I'm a scientist, so I, I uh, love to have explanations like, oh yeah, you can tell me 5.5 seconds in, in any time of the day, why should I believe you? And the whole explanations lead to this, this recommendation because there is a balance between the gases in our body, like the, the carbon dioxide, the CO2, which we breathe out and the oxygen, which we breathe in, we need to bring that to our cells, to every cell of your body, even in the toe or wherever it is. And then the oxygen goes into the cell and does its work to produce energy. And then the, the garbage, the things our body doesn't need anymore is CO2. And that needs to get carried by the blood cells again to the lung and you exhale. So the balance between inhale and exhale needs to be in a way that we have the right amount of CO2 in our blood and the right amount of O2. So in this balance, the cells can intake um, the right amount of O2. So this whole balance is a really complex system and we tend to breathe faster than 5.5 seconds and, and a lot of O2. So the CO2 level is low and then the cells have, if there is more oxygen in the blood, but it can't be transported to the cells. So if you're bored by scientific explanations, just try to breathe 5.5 seconds in and out. And if you do the math, that's like six times breathing per minute, a little uh, it's a little less and then this the whole balance the whole science the whole whatever is best for you is in balance if you do that I think that's so fascinating like six times per minute I usually breathe faster and um, I want to reduce that and that I, I write it in the text I'll post it afterwards for you and also on the blog if we train ourselves I, I programmed uh, reminders into my phone so that I think of these 5.5 seconds all the time. So when I sit and I'm when I'm concentrated or even on a walk that I count sometimes, not all the time of course, but that you are aware like, oh, I'm holding my breath. I'm so concentrated and working. I'm holding my breath. Hell no. Like breathe through your nose in this gently in this gentle um, balance of 5.5 seconds and if it's six or four you know yeah like getting into the direction of this ideal and then let's check the difference so my challenge for myself is that and i wrote in the text i'll post you afterwards that that um in the joy academy we do challenges like this to improve our lives to improve things which are maybe a problem for us like having more energy, like more oxygen in our cells, that's more energy. And if you can do it just by breathing slower and, and um, in a gentle way, hey, wow, it's free and uh, you just have to be reminded. And in Joy Academy, we do exactly that, being reminders of each other, having accountability partners and um, setting your own challenges for the whole month. We have our new, uh, the, the next 
monthly call is, is now in the end of November. The next one is in, in January. And you can be part of the January um, masterclass of, of the Vision, Vision 2021 um, webinar. That would be so cool if you are taking like taking your seat in the group of the Joy Academy members, but it's open for the public. So you can check me out and check how we can work through our our dreams and and vision and then also the fears of like ah I can't plan for 2021. Like look at 2020, nothing worked out. Like finding again a balance between believing that everything is possible and also um, being true to your dreams and, and wishes like, oh, I can have this or that, or I can create this or that, wh whatever the circumstances are. Like, believe in yourself, with or without company, but the company of the Joy Academy members is so, so cool and inspiring. So if you sign up today, I'll welcome you with open arms and the whole group will applaud you for this decision that you want to create your dream life day by day with your vision in your in your head and in your heart but like enjoy the now today that's the goal of of life right and what another recommendation again i know i could be annoying to you i don't know what you think the toyometer last time in this rainbowish design next one is hand painted painted by me in december design fill out the toyometer to focus on gratitude and what was great, what you are grateful for, what you got inspired by, this focus is so, so good. And I had, for example, yesterday evening, I recorded two interviews with such amazing guests, one from Atlanta, Georgia, and one guy from New York, and it's just, ah. Oh, I loved it and I was so inspired by them. I wrote it down on the on the Toyometer that these interviews were my highlight of the week. Like how cool is my work that this is my highlight. And just write down what's happening in your life. I'll post it into the blog post underneath my my text and get inspired, get into action for yourself, you know, breathe differently, check things out, try new things, be grateful, be aware of, of what you can write down when, when you get questions like the highlight of my week. I did all this for myself, like self-care is key to so many keys <laughs> and you have the keys in your hand, you just have to do it. And I'm so happy that you're watching this video Step one, what do I want? Step two, what do I do for, for making it true? And let's breathe while we are fulfilling our dreams. 5.5 seconds in, 5.5 seconds out and through our nose. Okay, thank you so much for watching. See you next week and see you um, in January. January 10th in the Switzerland afternoon is this webinar. And of course, we see us before, but just write that down in your calendar. January 10th, 10th um, I will send you more information for that. See you. Bye-bye. Take care.